Hello, Honors Chemistry students. In this video, we are going to cover Notes 1 of Unit 6, which is covering bonding. We are going to talk about naming ionic and covalent compounds. You may remember ionic uh, bonding naming from before fall break, so we've done this. This is Unit 3. On Schoology, I will post in today's e-learning folder the video I made back in unit three on how to name ionic compounds. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go over it again, but that video was a much longer video. Um, and if you just don't remember for whatever reason, I would suggest checking that out. So when we name ionic and covalent compounds, the first thing we need to do is figure out if they're ionic or covalent. If we look at this picture here, we have our periodic table, and on your periodic table, you should see your bold line stair step, and that separates your nonmetals from your metals. And ionic compounds are metals and nonmetals, okay? We call these formula units. This is where we crisscross. That's what a lot of people did in unit three. That's where we crisscross our charges. And covalent compounds um, are going to be simply between nonmetals. These are going to be called molecules, and we will use prefixes, okay? We will not do the crisscross method. No matter what, and this is something that, you know, it takes a time, some time to get used to, but you need to know, is that there will be no charges in your final formula. So we would never have something that's like Cr plus 3, O, 2, minus, or anything like that. We will have no superscripts, okay? We will only have subscripts. So... All of these are very nice in that we are going to end in ied. This is going to be true for ionic compounds and for covalent compounds. I'm going to do this left column first here of how to do ionic compounds. It's simply going to be our cation name plus our anion name. And um, for our cation, for example, we have calcium ion. We're going to get rid of the ion. Here when we have arsenic, it's as an ion, it's not arsenic ion, but it's arsenide ion, and we're going to get rid of our ion. And then we will just simply combine the names calcium arsenide is what this would be. When we put them together, what we will get is something like Ca2 plus As3 minus. Find both of these on your uh, laminated periodic table, and you'll see that calcium right above the Ca, it should say a 2, and that means that it has a 2 plus charge. And then for arsenic, you should see that above AS on the periodic table, it has a minus 3 or 3 minus charge. When we get the formulas, all we're going to care about is taking the number, and we'll put it with calcium, so we get Ca3. And then we'll take the 2, and we'll put it with arsenic, and this is calcium arsenide. Notice that in the formula, we don't have any pluses or minuses. There are no charges when these guys come together, and so this is calcium arsenide. Okay, now with transition metals, we will um, have Roman numerals. There are a few exceptions like silver and zinc, and we'll see these, okay? With polyatomic ions, you should have that list pretty close to memorized by now. If you don't, you still need to be working on that. But polyatomic ions always bond ionically. And then the names of a polyatomic ion, and I'm not going to write it because I've highlighted it here, they do not change. Okay, this makes sense to me. Polyatomic ions are, of course, ions, and ions bond ionically. Okay, let's talk about covalent compounds. These are going to be for two nonmetals bonding. And when two nonmetals, if you look at the periodic table, nonmetals form negative charges. And so they're not going to come together um, to negative charges. So they actually share electrons. Co can mean share. And so covalent compounds share electrons. We will use prefixes. And you should enjoy the prefix method here because it makes life a little bit easier. The prefix for one is mono. That makes sense. The the prefix for 2 is di. The prefix for 3 is tri. The prefix for 4 is a little bit weird, and it's tetra. So that one is one I'm going to put an asterisk by because people sometimes forget that one. 5 is penta. 6 is hexa. 
A lot of people like to make seven septa, but it's really hepta. Eight is octa, nine is nana, and ten is deca. Okay, the only rule with covalent compounds is the first one could never be mono. Okay, the first element is never mono. Okay, so for example, we have sulfur, so it's not monosulfur, but it's just sulfur, and then two oxygens would be dioxygen, but we always end in I, so this would be dioxide. Here we have two for our first element, so that would be dinitrogen. We only end in ide, so the first element is not going to end in ide. It's the whole thing ends in ide. Three oxygens, that will be trioxide. Let's say we have CO. The first element could never be mono, so it's just carbon. And then the second element can be mono, so this is carbon monoxide. Okay, on Schoology, you have a somewhat lengthy uh, practice quiz on this and I'm going to show you how I would do this first. What we want to do is we want to first label if something's a formula unit or a molecule. A good clue if it's a formula unit is if we have a metal. Okay, So boron and uh, bromine both are not metals so this will be a molecule. Calcium, that is a metal, so this will be a formula unit. Carbon is not a metal, so this is going to be a molecule. Chromium is a metal, so this will be a formula unit. So I'm not worried about naming it. I'm going to first label it as molecule or formula unit, and then I will focus on getting the formula or naming it. Silver is a metal, so this is a formula unit. Iodine is not a metal, so this is a molecule. Vanadium is a metal, so this is a formula unit. Lithium is on the metal side of the periodic table, so this is a formula unit. And then nitrogen is a nonmetal, so this is going to be a molecule. Okay, now we keep going. Phosphorus is a nonmetal, so this is going to be a molecule. And what makes sense to me is it has prefixes, and prefixes are always used with molecules. Potassium is a metal, so we're going to call this a formula unit. Iron is a metal, so we'll call this a formula unit. We see prefixes. That's a good clue. We have a uh, molecule, but it's also silicon, and silicon is a nonmetal, so this is going to be a molecule. Titanium is definitely a metal, so this is a formula unit, and then gallium, just barely, and let's, it's right kind of close to the edge of that stair set, but it is to the left, but let's say we weren't sure if it was a metal or a non-metal. Do you notice how there's no prefixes? Anytime there's no prefixes, this will be a formula unit. Okay, I'm going to go through and I'm going to name the molecules first, okay? That is uh, what is new here. So we're going to name the molecules first. We have boron and then bromine. So this is going to be boron. And then not, it is not bromine, but it's bromide. We have three of them. So this needs to be boron tribromide, okay? We are going to use a prefixes with molecules, okay? I'm gonna skip to C2Br6. Two carbons is going to be dicarbon. Six bromines, this is first going to be bromide, and it's going to be hexa. We go to iodine. It is a mono, but we can never start with mono, so this is just iodine, not monoiodine. And then two oxygens would be dioxide. We have two nitrogens, this would be dinitrogen, and then three oxygens will be trioxide. Okay, molecule here. Now, what's very nice with molecules is the prefixes tell us. So we have phosphorus, and we have selenide, which is SE. And if I don't know, it tells me we have tetraphosphorus, so that would be P4. 
We have triselenide, prefix for tri is meaning three. And then here we have disilicon, so uh, SI, and then two of them, and then bromide, BR. And uh, we have hexa, so that will be six, okay? I think molecules make a lot of sense. Try them out when you do your Schoology uh, quiz. And what I want you to do is first do your molecules first, then do your formula units. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to do formula units. I personally think formula units are a little bit more challenging than molecules to get right. So if this does not click for you, you need to take some responsibility and look at the video from unit three just to refresh yourself if this doesn't make as much sense for you. So with formula units, if we already have uh, the formula, like we do here with CAS, we are going to name it just like we do molecules, just no prefixes. So this is going to be calcium. And it's not going to be monosulfide, but it's just calcium sulfide. On this next one, we have chromium. And we have CO3. So this is going to be carbonate. Chromium is a transition metal, so what we've got to do is say we've got chromium plus some number, and you've got to know carbonate CO3 2 minus. If we were going to get Cr2, this must be plus 6 because we'd get CO3 6 with ionic compounds or formula units. You do reduce them, so this becomes Cr CO3 Three. They're both divisible by two. So this is going to be chromium six carbonate. Okay, we see silver. And then not monophosphide, but just phosphide. We look at the periodic table. Silver is a transition metal, but if you look above silver, all it says is one, which means it does not have multiple charges or it is not multivalent. So that would not need any Roman numerals. We go to the next one. This is going to be vanadium oxide. Vanadium is a transition metal, and we see lots of different charges. So what I would think about is we have O2 minus, O2 minus. Together, that is a minus 4. So vanadium must be plus 4. Here we have lithium fluoride. Lithium is not a transition metal. It is not multivalent, so we don't need any Roman numerals. Okay, we're going to do these last four, and then I want you to practice on Schoology. How do you get the formula? Go find potassium. That is K plus 1. Go find element number 8. That's oxygen, O2 minus. And then we want to crisscross the charges. So take that 2, give it to potassium, K2. Take that one, give it to oxygen. We don't write ones, so that'll be K2O. Here we have iron. Iron, they tell us, is plus two. Then we find phosphorus. Phosphide is P3 minus. Take the three, give it to iron, Fe3. Take the two, give it to phosphorus, P2. With uh, titanium four nitrate, We've got titanium, that's Ti. They tell us that it is a plus 4. You've got to know your polyatomic ions, so this is NO3. If you don't remember, always put polyatomic ions in parentheses each time. Nitrate is NO3 minus 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the 1, give it to titanium, that's just Ti, parentheses NO3, Take the 4, give it to nitrate, and we get Ti, parentheses, NO3, close parentheses, 4. Gallium is Ga with a plus 3 charge. Oxide is O2 minus. We will take that 2, give it to gallium, Ga2. Take that 3, give it to oxygen, O3. Okay, so I'm going to stop the video here. If you are confused on formula units, because it's been a while, check out the video I posted uh, on today's e-learning folder and have a good one.